on a mountain in Malawi, a man is hunting for treasure. He's the country's only trained cultural conservator. He's traveling around Malawi to uncover famous rock paintings. People have started the graffiti again. And neglected heritage sites. Oh, it's terrible. We clean this site, there's no graffiti, but it's back again. He's on a mission to find them, save them, and preserve them. My vision for the future is that uh, we preserve our heritage. We preserve our legacy for the common good of humankind. Malawi, the small country known to the world as the warm heart of Africa. But what the world doesn't know about Malawi is that this country owns a rich repository of treasure dating back to the origins of humankind. This treasure includes a two and a half million year old hominid jawbone that has helped convince the archeological world that Malawi is an important corridor between the cradles of humankind in South and East Africa. Malawi also has a trove of Stone Age implements, dated 250,000 years or older. Much of it still lies undiscovered, beneath the earth. Its grand collection of rock paintings has been recognized as a World Heritage Site. And vestiges of its great 16th century Marawi kingdoms, from which modern Malawi derived its name, can be found in the form of ceramics, iron implements, ivory and beads but malawi being not only small but also poor is struggling to protect this great inheritance its care depends on one man Malawi's Ministry of Culture's Department of Antiquities, Moses Mkumpa, arrives early for work. After doing a crash course in cultural conservation in the United States, he's now returned to become Malawi's first trained conservator in almost 20 years. Here and around the country, countless artifacts lie untouched, uncounted and uncared for. Moses' responsibility is overwhelming. With few resources, he must single-handedly curate and care for Malawi's rich cultural heritage. Moses stumbled upon this life-changing opportunity. He used to be a high school biology teacher. I became interested in becoming a conservator after looking at an advert in the news, I just uh, applied, I was just trying. The good thing is like uh, the way you're looking for someone who had uh, biology, I just become interested by chance. And then uh, I applied and I got the job. And from that day, I started uh, learning more about it. And uh, it has become life to me now. The main challenges that uh, I face, there are so many. You have uh, faced its uh, financial challenges. To carry out a treatment or even to store the artifacts, it needs equipment, it needs training. And all this just because there is need money for that. And apart from that, there is challenge of uh, expertise. There is only about uh, eight people who are experts in different fields, but this is just a, just a small number. Another challenge is the equipment. We don't have the equipment that is need, needed 
for our conservation work. And apart from that, we have uh, a problem with the uh, communities. I don't know, I can put like uh, a retrace rate in Malawi is so high. And because of that, people are not aware. So there is need for much uh, improve in terms of education for people to understand our cultural heritage material and start appreciating. Now Moses is embarking on a road trip around Malawi. His mission, to discover for himself what artifacts and sites the country owns and how best to preserve them. His first stop, a day's drive from the capital, is the tiny town of Chiratzulu. Stored inside a dilapidated house, the former home of a slave trader, of valuable artifacts of all kinds. This building, it's a national depository center. So what we have, it's uh, a lot of artifacts that have been excavated, the whole nation. We have fossils, not only for the dinosaurs, but for also other animals that ever lived in Malawi. We have pottery of different ages. Some dated 800 AD up to recent ones. I have come here to find out what I need to do as a conservator in the Department of Antiquities, how I can preserve the fossil that we have in this storage room. If you look at these bones, you can easily see that there is some kind of deterioration. Moses has also come here to collect some fragile ceramics. I'm just looking at this uh, beautiful, wonderful pot, and I'm interested in uh, how it has this type of uh, a breakage. It kind of been like it's uh, deliberately or it's something else. So I'm interested in uh, asking an expert who can tell me more about this pot. And then I'm also interested with this type of uh, adhesives what kind of these adhesives are. Moses was awarded the prestigious Leon Levy Fellowship in Cultural Conservation at New York University. And I was the first African to be awarded that. I didn't know much about conservation. Everything that I was doing was just still reading. But I, after the school itself, I know what I'm supposed to do, and I have a lot of job to do. I was in uh, a program that was more like a crash program. The first thing that I learned is uh, how we can reorganize our storage. Then I learned how to treat artifacts. The third thing is that uh, I learned the philosophy behind conservation. When we are saying we are going to preserve, what do you mean to preserve? And what do you mean when you are, you are preserving? Is it the artist's intent? Or is it that just the material? These are the issues that we need to take into account, and that was really an eye-opener. Moses gently packs his ceramics to avoid damaging them. Today, Moses' journey will lead him into the mountains and back to a crucial time in Malawi's slave trade history. We are going to Mangoji. I've never been there before. But to get there, he'll need an experienced guide. There he is. He's come here to find out firsthand what must be done to develop this neglected heritage site. But from the beginning, it becomes clear 
that this will be no easy task. Just getting to Fort Mangotchi involves a long, steep hike. The fort was built by the British in 1897 to block a strategic slave trading route between Africa's interior and its slave markets on the East African coast. Mangotchi, being situated on a narrow stretch of river between two lakes, was a relatively easy point through which the slavers would march their human cargo. But long before they reached the summit, Moses comes upon a disturbing scene. The animal, but boys are the animal there. Oh. Is it a group of people? The guide points out what he suspects are the insides of an animal. They are cooking there. Okay, well, yeah. Yeah. this is their fireplace. These are, these are the, the, the can go, this one. Oh, they are, they are, they are, they are, they are cooking, cooking, cooking their food. food. And, the, and the fire is yeah. still, yeah, the fire is still hot. The, 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 the next one, this one, this one. Mm -hmm. You can see? They are just near, maybe they are watching us. Yes. And worse is to come. Further up the mountain, Moses stumbles upon a group of young men carrying suspicious looking bundles. Caught red-handed, they scramble for excuses. Okay. Mm. What? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. We were This is a crime. This is a witness. In Malo 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 Aboma. Malo 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 Military kitchen. Yeah. 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 kitchen. Yeah. 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 This sign post, direction signs, and so would you are got your bunch and so would your history out, so would their tradition. This I did about. Just go. Uh, first, uh, I'm going to tell them to show me where they did get this uh, signage, and then I'm also going to instruct them the good thing of uh, preserving of uh, this heritage. I'm thinking about taking, the, taking them to the court and taking them to the chief, it is possible, to the police. So I'll figure out once or more I understand who is in charge. After many hours, and with darkness looming, they finally reach the fort. Yeah, this is so, so nice. I'm just feeling like I can go and touch it. Yeah, yeah. Wow, 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 wow. There's no problem. We can, we can enter inside. So can you read me where you, talk, uh, where, where you took this? Can you show me? Can you read me where you, take, you took this? Mm.
So this is the entrance? Yes. Is it the main entrance or the quarter's entrance? No, the quarter's entrance, but the main, the main entrance is there. The main entrance there? Yes, yes. So this is, uh, this is just uh, behind? Yes, this is behind, yes. Now we are in the fort? Yes, we are in the fort now. Yeah! You can see, you The main entrance. Okay, this is where it's supposed to live. So I'm going to deal with you later once we have done our exercise. But uh, as of for now, I can uh, ask you to go, but leave it here. Just leave it here. We shall see what we can do with this. Now that the thieves have been dealt with, for the time being at least, Moses turns his attention back to the reason for the fort's existence. That place, it reminds us our participation in slave trade and the horrors that uh, people in Mangoche suffered. And the suffering was immense, the pain of which is still felt by Malawians to this day. Arab raiders and their local proxies, the Yao, slaughtered men in their villages and captured their women and children. They marched them, tethered in neck bracelets, to the coast. Here, they were sold. Many died on the forced march, and many more on the ships that stole them from Africa. Fort Mangot is uh, the only tangible legacy that we have for the nation in terms of uh, slave trade. Moses returns the stolen signs for safekeeping to Mangochi's Malawi Museum. Despite his bad experience with the thieves, his visit to Fort Mangochi has enabled him to figure out what needs to be done. I think for proper presentation of the site, if I can develop a good lord to the site, because it is in the thick of forest and it's uh, about three hours. And three hours is just uh, too much. The second thing is that uh, we need to create the bush surrounding. This is what uh, we can do immediately so that uh, we safeguard the ruins. The ruins are beautiful. Once we lose them, we have lost them forever. A 10 month crash course in conservation can't turn Moses into an archaeological expert overnight. So today, he'd like to find out more about the pots he collected in Chiradzulu. We are going to Zomba to see an expert in archaeology. I need to get his advice. Moses visits Dr. Menno Willing, the Dutch archaeologist who originally excavated the pots. Uh, it's, 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 this is some pottery that uh, I took from Golone. Yes. So I just want to have uh, some information about them, mm -hmm. uh, its significance to Malawi, uh -huh. and maybe how we can uh, preserve them. There should be a number somewhere. There should be a number somewhere. Yeah. Uh, Tier 23 is the code for Zimbie. Zimbele? Zimbie is a sacrificial site. Wow, wow, wow. And um, it, that's, that cult, the Mbona cult, is unique to, 
to 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 we could say to the world, to the world. that's why Malawi rightfully put it on the tentative list, list. as a world heritage okay, site. Okay, I understand that, that. That cluster of sites, um, and that's why these these materials are particularly important. And then there's also another this port. Yes. Yeah. So the 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 best way, of course, for preservation for these is. Uh, on-site preservation. On-site preservation. Yeah, okay. I, and that's not the worst a bit. As I said, this site is not being encroached. Encroached, yeah. So the best thing is to give support. To the to, community. To the community, to the chief. To the chief. chief is usually in charge of the, these rituals. So what has Moses learned? That in order to preserve the past, he must engage with the present. This advice will be very useful during the next leg of his journey. Today we are heading to Jongoni, where I'm going to see the log paintings at Jongoni World Heritage Site. I'm very excited for that. And Moses has good reason to be excited. The Jongoni rock art area contains almost 130 sites, some dating back over 2,000 years. First, he's going to check on a site that was cleaned of graffiti at great cost, the last time he was here. Wow, people have started graffiti again. We cleaned, but he... Oh, it's terrible. It's really terrible. We cleaned this side, there's no graffiti, but it's back again. And the, the government had to pay dollars for this uh, painting panel to be cleaned. It was cleaned from that far end up to this end. But now you have all graffiti and uh, we can't tolerate this to be happening. There is need for something to be done. The devastation is total. If you see this, this, this is the original painting. This is uh, the original painting. Here you also had uh, some original painting. This is the original painting. This is an original painting. It's uh, the entire panel that had the uh, good paintings. So it is important that uh, we build a fence so that we bury people coming into uh, coming into this area to touch or to do their painting, and then we increase patrols. And it's high time that he, a culprit of this uh, kind of uh, damage are uh, being taken to court. The most important thing that we need to do is to make sure that the communities around understand the importance of this heritage. They understand the need of uh, preserving, safeguarding what we have. This is the heritage for all humanity. It's not only for Chongoni, for Malawi, for Southern Africa. This is the world heritage. Shocked and angry at what he saw yesterday, Moses decides to take action. He visits the local primary school to talk about the importance of preserving Chongoni's rock art. Good morning, class. Good morning, sir. Today we will look at uh, preservation of cultural heritage. So how many of you have ever visited the painting sites? How many? You? Have you ever visited the log paintings? Yes. How many? Everyone? It's you? What is, uh, how many types of paintings do we have? But he's not sure if his message is getting through. Nevertheless, he pushes on. You are not supposed to vandalize the place. Don't pick anything there. What we have spent, it's a lot of money. I know that you are to school going kids. You are supposed to have books. But if we safeguard this, the government will have money to buy your books. Unsettled by his experiences so far at Chongoni, Moses approaches his next site visit with some trepidation. <sighs> to 
get there involves another steep hike. But it's worth it. Wow. Isn't that gorgeous? Wow, it's really impressive. They're still intact. And the good thing is, there's no graffiti. What you are seeing here, you have two paintings, the red ones and the white ones. And these white paintings, they depict the traditions of the chair and mainly uh, what we refer to them as the Nyao paintings. These are Nyao characters and they are more like uh, spiritually connected to the Chewas and traditionally connected to the Chewas. Nyao is a 600-year-old traditional religion practiced by secret societies across Malawi. Its sacred figures are depicted in the white rock paintings. The white one belong here, below here it's uh, what we refer to as Kashiyama Lilo. This is a Nyao character. It is the one that he carries the dead body to the grave. Nyao characters were enacted in traditional dances, which would be performed at important ceremonies. So it is a, a character that is only performed during funerals of a chief or of a uh, a counselor, the one that is up, it's uh, an elephant. It's also one type of uh, a Nyao character that is only performed during a uh, chief, chieftainship. you kind of uh, interacting with the people who lived in the past differently. It's just amazing, it's just impressive. And you can't find this nowhere than here in Malawi. And Anyao lives on to this day in dances that only initiates into its secret societies are permitted to perform. So, on the last day of his journey, Moses has come to immerse himself in the ancient spirit world. Moses joins in, throwing down money to show his appreciation. The dance is really important as regards to the rock paintings, as it gives us what the Chewa people in the past used to do. I am excited because I know what I need to do. My vision for the future is that uh, we preserve our heritage. We preserve our legacy for the common good of humankind. This is our story. I'll be happy if we achieve that.